Okay, it's good. Life. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa afdal al-salatu wa atimu al-tislim wa ala alihi wa ashabihi al-jama'een. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la shibika la. Wa ashadu anna muhammadin abduhu wa rasooluh. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam al-tislim al-kithira. Amma ba'du. This is the third sitting. With the famous book of the Sheikh Al <coughs> Al Imam Al Muhaddis Al Faqih Jalil Wa Muhammad Nasr Al Din Al Al Bani Rahimahullah Taala Wa Nasr Allah An Yaskanahu Jannatu Firdaus Al A'la Amin Wa Yajziyahu An Al Islam Al Muslimin Wa Yaslahu Akhtahu Wa ين وما با وينفعه في يعني قبره منه آمين. The last time I made a mistake and look at the wording on the first part, the second part. The first part, I think I put introduction, something about the شيوخ of the Arthur, and I also put facing the Kaaba. But we didn't, in that first segment, when I went back and listened, check, we didn't talk about the Kaaba and that. We talked about um, just some introductory stuff. And then the second part is when we started the book, which is uh, the stuff about the Kaaba, you know, facing the Kaaba. So I have to go back and correct that. We actually went from facing the Kaaba, the stuff about the Kaaba, to Ida uh, Magra, Bain your day and musalli when the person goes in front of you while you're praying. And then the last part we took and we stopped at the hadith. If a uh, a pig, if a a donkey, uh, pig, a woman who is and here it means a lady who has reached the time of her life where she now she has a monthly cycle. This hadith means the lady that is now a little girl, she's reached womanhood. So if she passes the donkey, a pig, or a black dog, then the prophet said the salat of the man is nullified. And um, Sheikh bin Bass was asked about this, and he said, it, just what the prophet said, your salat is nullified. They said that means you have to start over the salat from a new beginning. He said, yeah, you have to start over from a new salat, a new beginning. So that's the last place that we left off. And um, also, I want to mention something from the introduction before we go. There's a part in the introduction where the sheikh is talking about division, ikhtilaf. And the sheikh, he quoted two hadith, Imam al-Albani. One of them... It says that the prophet said, "Ashabi kal nujum, ayyuhuma, yani mada taqtadu, ayyuhuma taqtadi, yani my companions are like stars. Any one of them you follow, yani then you will be guided." And the prophet sallam did not say that. That is yani kadab ala nabi sallam. Sheikh he mentioned that, but this is a famous. Statement on the tongues of the people, they use it on the member, they use it on Juma. And then the other one was, they said, the Prophet said, Al ikhtilafu rahma yani li ummati. Al ikhtilafu maza rahmatan yani li ummati. Where they said, the Prophet said, differencing is a mercy for my ummah. That hadith as well, many of the scholars before Sheikh al Albani including him and those that come after him. Yani they said this hadith is wadari, it is fabricated, made up. So these two, I forgot to mention the introduction, and this goes against the spirit of Islam, Ruhi Islam, where you ta'ala, you did with taqwa, where tabarakul wa ta'ala, he mentioned, uh, uh, كل حزب بما لديه كل حزب بما لديهم فرحون 
each group is happily rejoicing in what they're forming and in the Lama. Prophet Sallam also mentioned uh, talked about the people in different sects. He also mentioned Yani Jama'atul Rahma Adab that being together united is Rahma and the opposite fighting and dividing is a type of punishment and this hadith is authentic and the Mu'jam uh, of Imam al-Tabarani. So these two points I forgot to mention. Uh, SubhanAllah wa bihamdi wa subhanAllah deen. The fetch was for Allah. I forgot to mention that in the introduction. These two narrations attributed to the Prophet. They were lies from the Prophet. That is again, my Sahaba, they are like stars. Any one of them you follow, you'll be guided. You know, هذا ليس بصحيح وكذلك الاختلاف رحمة لأمتي Division is a mercy for my ummah These two statements, they have not been uh, mentioned by the Prophet Rather, they are attributed to him and they are liars in Allah most of us Salli ala Tafadda Bismillah, salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah You have a mic? Yeah Allah is going to speak As-salatu tujah al-qabr Wa kana yinhi an as-salatu tujah al-qabr fa yaqul لا تصلوا إلى القبور ولا تجلسوا عليها. Ihtijal Qabr. Ihtijal Qabr means that you are praying and the grave is in front of you. The reason the Shaykh has mentioned this because again, he found many books talking about the Salah. Many people wrote about the Salah. One of the reasons he decided to write this book, Imam al-Bani, and some things were left out, some fabricated the hadith were in the book. Some things need to be clarified. Sunnah needs to be defended or revised. So this is one of the issues. Praying towards the grave. So, for example, I'm here. The table is the grave. Somebody is in the grave. The here, the Prophet prohibited that you pray towards the grave. And the Prophet also prohibited that you sit upon the grave. Many times you go to the graveyard, People are standing on the grave. Mm -hmm. Prophet prohibited that as well. Have to be careful. If you don't step on the grave, meaning someone is in that ground below you, you should be walking on the side, right, left, in front, back, not on top. Like somebody to stand on this table if this was the grave. Prophet prohibited that. For somebody to sit on top of this table if it was a grave, the Prophet prohibited that. And to have it in front of me, and so Allah Akbar, and now I'm praying, and the grave is in front of me. These three things the Prophet prohibited. And Shaykh al Mukbir, he was asked this question, and he said that if there's a wall, or a gate, or a fence, or something between you and the grave, then this does not include the prohibition. So as long as as you're praying and nothing between you and the grave is in front of you, it's prohibited. But let's say that the grave is here and there's a wall between me and the grave. Mm -hmm. Makeshift wall out of, you know, cardboard, aluminum, cement, permanent wall, a fence. You can see through the fence, but guess what? The fence is there. Then this will allow you to be praying towards the grave with something between you and the grave. So part of the meaning of this that the Sheikh is talking about praying towards the grave and the grave is in front of you with nothing between you and the grave. The Prophet prohibited this to the light of Salaam. As for praying, the grave is on the right of you, the grave is on the left of you, the grave is behind you. These are permissible types of praying. Even if it be at a graveyard, you can do that. But if the grave is in front of you, you should not pray yani, in the direction of that grave, towards that grave. More overly, this will incite the person now to <clears throat> ask the one in the grave, the one that's in front of them, seek protection from him and so forth. So this is also what's called Siddhidhiriya, yani closing the door to something before it's open and Allah Azza wa Jal 
جوز باس تفضل النية وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل امرئ ما نوى تفضل This next chapter is from the conditions of the salah. Remember last time we met and we had two sittings, we talked about the terminology. Here, aniyah. And if you were to talk about salah in general, you have something you must do before the salah. In order to pray, there's some things that comes before you even pray. That's called shurufa. Shurufa, condition. Then you have, once you have those set of things done before the Salah, now Salah is divided into things that are part of the Salah. Without the Salah having those things, the Salah is incomplete. And these things are called pillars, or hand, pillars. So conditions are things that must be done before you pray, outside of the Salah, before you pray. That is, that is called conditions, Shurot. And arukan are things that are done in the salat. Yani once you start to pray, like takbir to ihram, to raise your hand and say, Allah Akbar, that's called a takbir to ihram. A takbir to say Allah Akbar. And ihram is from the things that now you cannot do, but you can normally do eat, drink. Uh, laugh, look around, all of those things are prohibited. So it's called the takbir that makes certain things unlawful while you devote yourself to Allah and the salah. That takbir to ihram, this is broken. It's a pillar. Now you're in the salah. Now you have qiyam, you cover that. Standing. And everybody must stand when you pray the five salah unless that person is sick. If he's sick, then he gets nisful ajr, 50%, 50 credit for his salat if he's sitting because he's sick for the five daily prayer. If he's sitting for the nawafu, sunnah, he's sitting for the tahajjud, he's sitting for wikr, then this does not mean he will get 50%. But if he sits for the five daily prayer with a valid reason from the religion that allows him to sit because standing is the first thing, then if you can't stand, then you'll get 50%. You'll get half the reward for your prayers and the person who stands. So that standing is broken, pillar as well. You have al-fatiha. That's coming. This is also broken. Meaning if you don't make tafbir to ihram, pillar. If you don't stand, pillar. If you don't recite al-fatiha, pillar, you have no salah. So here, niya is before you get a salah. This is called prerequisite. This is condition. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the Mal'a'mal bin niya, yani with the tamar of Buta, and he mentioned bin niyat with an open tie. The, the meaning is the same. One is plural, one is singular. So this, yani, is a big discussion, niya. Many of the people, they, well, like, you still see people do it. He has to say his niyyah. Allah Azza wa Jal ya'lamu ma fi sudur. Allah knows what's in your chest. Allah tabarakhu wa ta'ala when tukfu al tubuduhu ya'lamu Allah. You conceal it or you make it public. Allah, he knows either way. That's why in Mama Noe in his real Salaheen, he said, Aniyyah mahalaha al-qalb. The place the niya is, is in the heart, not in the tongue. So to stand and say, all oh, I intend to pray for Raqqa of Asr on this Athani Yom al Rajab, Yani and Yom al Sep, Yani at 3.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Allah, all of that he was saying that's supposed to be niya. That's, Yani Allah, it's not proper. It's not proper. Uh, at least it's not prophet. Most bid'atun. Because the prophet didn't do it. Somebody will come and say, okay, well then what about Imam al Shafi'i? He said that to say la bayka al hajj al hajj is niya. La bayka hajj al hajj is niya. La bayka, I'm here only for you, Allah. 
Hajj, Hajj, making a Hajj. Imam al Shafi said, This is Niyyah. And you say this out loud. What about that? Then Shaykh al Mukbil, he said that him, some of his students that became ulama, they searched the Um, the book called Al Um, Imam al Shafi wrote. 3,000 pages. Mm -hmm. Tremendous book called Al Um, like Um, your mother. Al Um. The Shaykh named it Kitab Al Um. Why? Because it's the first book written of thick like this with the chain, Yani. Uh, very short, back to Tabi'in, it's about Tabi'in, Sahaba like this. And that book, Imam Shafi, you did mention this uh, Tazbiyah, to say a, a, a Labaika, or oh Allah, I'm here for you, a Hajj Huj. But Sheikh Mubil said they did not find that he said it's Niyyah. So that means some people understand from Imam Shafi, you, or Maybe he said it in another work, which this happens, and then he changed his mind. At any rate, this is not considered niyyah either. This is kalbiya. This is like yani, saying shahada, or a statement of testimony, or yani, shahada to dhikr, yani, being witness to Allah with the statement, or it's yani, a kalimat to qayyiba, or a norman of ibadah. But this can't be an example of making your niyyah on the tongue, can't be. So the niyyah is placed, the Prophet said, a'malu bin niyyah. That means what you decide to do is going to be in your heart. If you get up and you go and you make wudu and you get ready to pray in this Zuhur time, unless you overslept, uh, uh, unless you overslept Fajr, then it's obvious you're playing, praying uh, a Zuhur. And this, Yani, in your mind, in your heart, you know, oh, this is Zuhur. Then that's what's niyyah, what you decide. Yani cost, what you aim to do. Yani al azima, your decision. So the Sheikh brings this, and this niya is from the conditions before you make the tatbira. Wallahu musta'an wa alayhi tuklan. At tatbir. Thumma kana sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yastifjah at salati bi qawli Allahu akbar. Huh? Here for slow, so slow. Oh, this is the mask. Ah, the mask. Yeah. Okay. Faith. The mask. Yeah. Then, <laughs> وكان يرفع صوته بالتكبير حتى يسمع من خلفه وكان إذا مرض رفع, رفع أبو بكر صوته يبلغ الناس تكبيره صلى الله عليه وسلم نعم This the shaykh is said the takbir وعمر النبي سلم المصير الصلاة لذلك فسلم ordered the man who مصير الصلاة means a man in the pray right مصير is from the word ساعة or سيدي something bad so the Prophet named the man who didn't pray properly, but he prayed. And this shows that just because you pray, don't mean you have a salah. Mm -hmm. If you're going too fast, if you leave something off, uh, Allah Musta'an, you don't give each position enough time to differentiate, or he was just standing, or he just raised from bowing, he just moving. All of this makes your salah. Although you prayed it, bad. Meaning not accepted. So if the Prophet told that man, he prayed. The Prophet said in the masjid, watching him. Because he was already in the masjid, the man came in and prayed. Then when the man went to leave, he said, Salam alaikum, ya Rasulullah. The Prophet said, Wa alaikum salam, irja'ah. Fasalli, fa inna kalam tusalli. He said, after you return the salam, he said, now, go back and pray. Because indeed you have not prayed. <laughs> So the day he went, he prayed. The first time he ordered him, he went, he fulfilled the command, he walked back, same thing, give the salam like you leave leaving. Prophet said, salam back to him. He said, <laughs> he said the same thing again. Go back and pray, because the knee of not pray. After the third time, when the man got to the prophet, he didn't give salam again. He said, Yeah, Rasulullah, teach me how to pray. <laughs> it's obvious I don't know what I'm doing. Something is wrong. What am I doing wrong? Teach me, because you sent me three times to pray, and here I am again. 
So the prophet told him, when you make wudu and you wash all the parts, again, she shows you should take the time of wudu. But you shouldn't take a long, long time. It's just something called al wulha al wulha is when shaitan whispers to you, did I do my elbows? And then you start over. Wash your face, with your elbows. You're almost to the end. Wait a minute. Did I wash my face? And the shaitan keep you going, starting over and over and over and over. Allah knows how. Waswas with wudu. So here, Prophet said, when you make wudu, you wash all of the parts of the wudu. Then, yani, you face the Kibla and you say, Allahu Akbar. He said that nobody has a salat except he does that. And the hadith which the Shaykh recited, which is in the Sunnah of Imam al Tirmadi, La Meta'u Salat Ma Ba'atuhur. Meta'u Salati Mudafa Mudafi Lay Atuhur. Now, that you only way you can open the door to salat. The only way, in other words, you can begin salat is with tuhur. Wudu, if it's needed. Ghusl, if it's required. Atiyamun, if there's no other choice. You have to have some type of purification. And then the Prophet he said, Yani, um, wa 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 it's sacred than the salat now, it's going to become sacred when you say, Allah Akbar. So normally you can look around freely. Normally you can eat something, you can drink, you can salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. You know, how are you? Fine. But now once you say, Allah Akbar, you can't do none of that. You can't say, oh man, I'm hungry. You're on the second rock out. Take something out, bite it, chew it, swallow it, and continue praying. You broke your salat. You can't say, oh man, I'm thirsty. Reach in your pocket, open your gateway, swig it, put the top back, keep praying. You're working for Allah. You know, Allah must die. So the Prophet said, it becomes sacred with the takbir. This is the point the Shaykh has mentioned. And he said, wa, wa And the only way you can get out is tislim. But if someone breaks wind, it says, burn. And I have to say, Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Based on that hadith, because what broke the salat was the breaking of the wind. But you see, many people do that. His guy in the bathroom, or he breaks wind, he makes salams because he thinks this hadith is general. No, this hadith is particular to finishing the salat and not breaking the salat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. رفع اليدين وكان يرفع يديه تارة مع التكبير وتارة بعد التكبير وتارة قبله وكان يرفعهما ممدودة الأصابع لا يفرج بينها ولا يضمها أجل وكان وكان يرفعهما ممدودة الأصابع آه وما بعد ذلك لا يفرج بينها ولا يضمها الله يبارك فيكم this and you can see I'm smiling because it's making me remember the days and the Mahat, Yani Khairiya, Yani Al Dawid Hadith did the match. Because this we studied this book. Yani Allah It took us 30 days. We studied every day, five days a week for 45 minutes, hour max, you finish it in a month. And the teacher, he's got 18 years with Sheikh Mukbil. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. He's bringing all kinds of fawa'i, Ibn al-Qayyim al is saying this, that. If Sheikh al said something, and it's to be challenged, and he has an ill, he's going to challenge the Sheikh. Oh, man, you're talking about something, so I don't know. Never, never like it before, like you in a type of theater of ill. Allah <laughs> Akbar. And it's amazing because all of this time, is still, when you read it, it comes back to me, Allah. And this was in the 90s, man, mm. 2000s. Yeah, I mean, there, you know, subhanAllah. Mm -hmm. Allah just have mercy on him, forgive him, bless him, make this from the Sadaq of Jariya for the Shaykh Ameen. Mm -hmm. Well, Imam Al Albani Ameen. Mm -hmm. This, the Shaykh is talking about the issue, uh, Allah Muhammad, uh, raising the hands. of raising the hands. And this is a controversy. Mm -hmm. When you pray, depending on which region people come from, you might see people raise their hands once and that's it. He never raised them again. That's in the beginning. Allahu Akbar. 
and he may touch his earlobes. Hmm. Oh, uh, okay, but now he's got to put his hand somewhere. And he's never going to raise no more to the end of Salah. He makes Tesleem. You only see him raise more. Some other people, every time he moves, he's raising his hand. Every time he says, Allah, Akbar, he raises his hand. And then some other people, they're going to raise it, mashallah, in the beginning. Then he's going to raise it, yani, when he uh, come out of Rukua. So may Allah live in heaven. And then, yani, uh, he's going to also raise it when he stands up for the third rakah. But some people will lie. You say, why didn't he raise his hand? Because some hadith will lie. They didn't reach them. And this even the sentence about Imam Abi Hanifa said he rejects hadith sahih for hadith da'if or he doesn't accept Bukhari. Ah, hey, Bukhari wasn't alive. No, it wasn't. Imam Abi Hanifa was alive. What are you talking about? How could he accept the hadith and afford you Bukhari? Bukhari wasn't even alive. Look at this mentality. And he was not a muhaddith, he was faqih, alam. But he was not a, a specialist in hadith. So some stuff he didn't know, he didn't reach him, what happened? The point is that when we will make the takbir, the shaykh is mentioning, raise your hands either yani, lengthwise your shoulder. You can, and you can do it this way because your hand is still yani, has a degree of length to your shoulder. When you like this, it's just from the chest area. You do it like this, and you'll see people who might do like this. Allah Akbar, he might do like this. Some people, and and then the, and he said, all the prophets say ila udune to his ears. This word ila in Arabic, it can mean ma'a. It can mean ma'a. Ma'a means with. So when you see a person do like this. You say, why is he doing that? This bid'ah, the prophet didn't do that. But the language says, ila udune. So ila could mean like this, towards it. It could also mean ma'a, along with. Ila has that meaning. Like the Tabarakta wa ta'ala, he said in Surah to Nisa, wala ta'kulu, what? astaghfirullah <clears throat> wala ta'kulu, and do not consume, amwalahum ila amwalikum. Ila, he's talking about a person who has an orphan. He's in charge of the orphan because the parents died, but the orphan has some money. Allah said, well, that's tech cool. He's not talking about eat, he's talking about consume, use. Amwalahum. Their wealth, ila amwalikum. Ila hears me, ma'a amwalikum. Don't take that money, mix it with your money, and use it like it's yours. No. Keep it separate. That's their money. This is your money. And Allah said, Eli and the ulama of Tafsir, they say, here it means ma'a. Don't mix the monies. So when the prophet say, Eli Ila Udunei, it could mean like this, toward Eli. He said, men and bay, Eli, Meshjid, Nahu and Meshjid. You're going towards, in the direction of. So towards his ears. But they also could carry this meaning. And that's why some people didn't do this. So be careful when you say bid'ah. Linguistically, that person is looking for hadith, and the prophet said, Eli, and he's doing like this because that's one of the meanings. Although the prophet, we don't have a description where it said he touched, but he said Eli. So this in the language. And then the, 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 the sheikh, he mentioned, tell him, yeah, have his hands like this. Not like this. It's just important the fingers. Somebody said, oh man, that's petty. What difference does it make? He making take beer. If his fingers together are closed, all of this is following, it's considered following the prophet. This is the Bible. So he raised his hands, either to shoulder length, this way, this way, in front of the shoulder, the side of the shoulder, towards the ears, or some people are going to do like this because Eli also means ma, so they take it that meaning. And uh, from Salam, he would raise his voice because takbira means to say Allah Akbar. So that's the takbirah. What's the raising of the hand? It's part of what the prophet would do when he says Allah Akbar. Sometimes he would do like this. While he's raising the hand, Allah Akbar with. Sometimes he would raise the hands first and then say Allah Akbar, but he raised them first. Then other times he would say Allah Akbar and then raise the hands. So Takbir with raising the hands, takbir before raising the hands, and takbir after raising the hands. And sometimes 
You see me, I try to illustrate that in the Salat because this is the different ways the Prophet would do it, you know. No matter when you're moving, you say, Allahu Akbar, you can do it with the movement. You can move first and then say, Allahu Akbar, and you can say, Allahu Akbar, and then move. And that's why the companions, they wouldn't move when he said, Allahu Akbar. They'll move after he moved mm -hmm. and he said the takbir. Yeah. Because if he said Allahu Akbar first, but he don't move and you go before him, it's a major sin. And many scholars said if you go before the Imam or you raise before the Imam, this is a way to nullify your salah. And for Salam, he said, yani, um, to them, when one person he raised before the Imam, the Prophet seen him from behind his back, he said, uh, 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 we will not afraid of you, that Allah, yani, ja'ala ra'saka, yani, rubs on the himal, that Allah will make you, when you raise up, your head will be like the shape of a donkey, because you're playing with the religion by going before the imam. So the Prophet said that to caution them, and ya khalif Allah wa juhakum, Allah will change, disfigure your face, that person thought the Prophet was praying. The companion said he kept going before the imam. They said, Wallahi, we looked and we seen his face was shaped like the shape of a himal. Because the prophet not only telling you don't do something, but he tell you, do you not afraid of this or you not afraid of that. If the prophet say something and you keep it doing it, it's almost like you're gonna, it's going to happen to you. Better watch it. Remember, he told the man, don't eat with your left. Because the shaitan eat and drink with his left. The man said, I'm not a He said, I can't eat. Yeah, I need to eat with my, my right. I can only eat with my left. The prophet said, Fastatir. Then Allah is going to make you able to only eat with your left. The man was being stubborn. Hmm. But because he said, I can't, the prophet said, okay, may you not be able to eat with your right. And the man could not raise his right no more. He became paralyzed on the right hand side from that time, which now he has to eat with his left. He has to drink with his left because he disobeyed the prophet. So this is important to know when the prophet tell you, should you not be doing this? Will you not be doing this? Or you're not afraid of Allah with this, that? That's a warning stop. Because it's a, it's a great possibility. Even after the time the properties died, guess what? You're doing something. Allah could make that thing happen to you. Look into the sky. The prophet prohibited that. So you're not afraid of Allah will snatch away your vision. It's reported by some of the sellers that people were doing that, playing around. And the person said, I can't see. Allah snatched away his vision. Because he's looking up like this while he's praying, playing around. Allah will stop. We we'll take one more, and then we we'll stop for Salah. Okay. I'm just gonna read the hadith uh, about like raising your hand to your Fadda. ears Fadda. because you already covered us. So I'm just gonna read it. وكان يجعله ماحد ومن كبيه وربما كان يرفعه ما حتى يحادي بهما أذنين وضع اليمنى على اليسرى والأمر به. هيا. الساعة ثالث. Huh. Three o'clock. Yes, it's three or seven now. Okay, we'll take. We'll stop here and we'll come back and show us about it. You don't want to just stop at, at the What's prayer the, time and we can just pray. What stop time is pray. prayer time? 3.30. Oh, it is? Yeah, okay, we changed cool. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah so that's right. We changed it. We did change so we'll just it. So we'll just keep thing. going and yeah. then 3.30 we'll call the Adhan and the Qam and then we'll pray. Inshallah. Now, hold up. وَدْعُ الْيُمْنَى عَلَى الْيُسْرَى وَالْأَمْرُ بِهِ وَكَانَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ يَدْعُ يَدْعُ الْيُمْنَى عَلَى الْيُسْرَى وَكَانَ يَقُولُ إِنَّا مَعْشَرَ الْأَنْبِيَاء أُمَرْنَا بِتَعْجِيلِ فِطْرِنَا وَتَأْخِيرِ سُحُورِنَا وَأَنْ نَضَعَ أَيْمَانَنَا عَلَى شَمَائِلِنَا فِي الصَّلَاةِ وَمَرَّ بِرَجُلٍ وَهُوَ يُصَلِّي وَقَدْ وَضَعَ يَدَهُ الْيُسْرَى عَلَى الْيُمْنَى فَانْتَزَعَهُمَا وَوَضَعَ الْيُمْنَى عَلَى الْيُسْرَى Hey, let me go back to Tukbira. I forgot a few points and then I'm going to go to the next chapter that we just started which is putting the right hand over the top of the left and the shit added yeah, and he, upon your chest. Is that right? The, that's the one after. So which one is the right over the left? This one is the Marra ala rajin wa This is Marra ala rajin. It's not, yeah, you put the right on the left. Yeah, this one uh, right on the left, yes. Yeah, but that's yeah. what I said. Yes, yes. So this chapter you just started to put the right on the, the left. left. Yes. Okay, yeah. but it don't say ala no, sadr. No, no, sadr but is a shape, different one. It's a different one. A different one, inshallah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Okay, quick. 
Okay. Uh, the point I want to make about the Tadbira, I forgot. He said also when he was sick, he would, yeah, I mean, from Salam with the Tadbira, because we'll get, remember again to say, Allahu Akbar, this is the Tadbira. Sometimes the brothers say, Allahu Akbar. Mm. He tried to say, Allahu Akbar. The thing is, he didn't learn the Mahabaj Haroof. He didn't learn the way and the descriptions and the way that the letters in Arabic are. Sometimes the brothers, they learn from people that have a good intention. The brother may know more than him, but that, don't, that doesn't mean the brother learned properly himself. So the brothers, they learn how to read. Maybe they've been in the prison, they learned. And would like to have a bad pronunciation. But this is really bad. To say, Allahu Akbar. One brother, he was saying this. I was shy to say it to him because he's my elder. He's like old enough to be my father. Mm. So, mm -hmm. what I did was it was me and him alone. And then after he led the salah, I told him, and, and see how Allah worked? He made a mistake in the salah. Mm -hmm. So, I was able to correct him in the salah. And then after salah, they gave me the door to say, Ikra. So he opened the Mus'haf, he read in the Surah, and fixed his mistake, and then I said, okay, al an Al-Fatiha. So he did the Al-Fatiha, he corrected that, and then I said, you know, I know that some of the brothers, you know, they said, Allahu Akbar. I said, say Allahu Akbar. He said, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> I said, you, you hear that, right? He said, wow, I never, I've never paid attention. I said, yeah, Allahu Akbar. You can try and say, Allahu Akbar, with the rock. So, you'll find the African people, it's common, they say, Allahu Akbar, they put the, the Dhamma on the rock. And this is permissible. Ahsanu, Aslamu, Akbar. Because you can't go wrong if you say, Allahu Akbar. You're not going to say, Allahu Akbar. That's wrong to say, Allahu Akbar. You elongate the back. Allahu Akbar, wrong. You should say Allah Akbar straight away, no elongation. To say Allah Akbar. So elongate in the beginning, that's wrong. And to say Allah Akbar again at the end, the bad you elongate. Oh, this is wrong. Shaykh Taymini said this is kusulafdi. To say Allah Akbar. And this is a question mark. You're actually, actually saying, is Allah the greatest? Out of this step hand for asking questions. Allahu Akbar, Akbar, you elongate the bad. This is making a law that the scholar said, Pabal. Pabal is a, a drum you beat. Say, Akbar, this is Pabal, like you're saying, Allah is a, a drum, something you beat. This is the meaning you add that back. But you don't know this if you don't know the Arabic language, but everybody can learn properly. And so these elongations is part of the misconceptions and the wrong pronunciation for the takbir. So it, it made me think about this I want to mention. And also Salam used to raise his voice. Sometimes you hear the Imam he said Allahu Akbar, he said so. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Akhi, you the Imam, you gotta say it loud so people can hear you behind. He's me. Allahu Akbar. And then other times you hear the Imam he said Allahu Akbar. The people behind him said, Allah, Akbar, Allah. It's wrong. You'll raise your voice eight times with the Tatabira. The five daily prayer, you should not be raising your voice behind the Imam except in one case. And the Shaykh mentioned that. He says, if the Prophet was sick and the sickness affects your body, you weird, you can't raise your voice. Then he said, Abu Bakr would raise his voice. Abu Bakr would take the place of the prophet with Tukbira so the people behind can hear. So if I'm sick and I can't raise my voice, the one who called the Adhan, he should say, Allahu Akbar, so the people could hear when you have a lot of people. But now we have a mic. Some people still want to practice that sort of lap bass, no problem. But the point is, the other people have to hear the Tukbira. It's not for everybody to raise their voice with the Tukbira. Allah Musta. So now with the chapter, put them the right over the left. The Shaykh, he said, the Prophet passed by a man, he was praying, he had his left over his right. So the Prophet took his left hand and put the right hand over top of it. This the right way to have the right 
over the left. They said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That means if you give it some charity in secret, don't tell everybody, I give charity to that brother. You know, I give this to the... Sometimes you say out loud to encourage, but a lot when you give it in secret, don't let people know you're giving the secret. And if you give it open, then they're going to know because you encourage it. So he has the right hand over the left hand. And this is the shake he mentioned. The Prophet Sallam removed the man once so far to remove a man's hand, change his hands around, take the left off the right, and put the right on the left. Keep going? No. Nah. The sister got you your copy. About a couple of people. Yeah. The sister? Your wife. wife. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta make that clear. I don't <laughs> take no coffee from no sister. Well, she's a, you're, at a restaurant. You're my sister. <laughs> Live in the field. Papa, Zach Malaki, Babu Lafi. so yeah. shake your arrange it like this. First, your hand should be right over left, not left over right. Now, once you get that straight, where should the hands be? So we have two things. The hand right over left shows you shouldn't have your hand left over right, and it also shows you shouldn't have your hands on your waist, like the Yahud. Mm -hmm. Jews to put their hand on their waist and pray. Prophet forgives you from doing that. Rock. And hand down to your side. Like it's a big thing for the people, some of them they claim will fall in the Mashab of Imam Malik. This is a reputation clearly that the hand shouldn't be to the side, no on the hips. It should be yani, right over left because even the left over the right is wrong. Now the Sheikh he mentioned where to place those hands, which is a further clarification. It shouldn't be to the side of your body as well. The shaykh, he said, upon the chest. You also have some people that said that praying with the hands upon the chest is for a lady because the lady has raised area of the chest because she have a breast. So they said, the woman's salat is different from the man. Allah Musa, you'll find this in the... Asian continent a lot. Uh, I not heard, I've heard it here, Shay. You heard Some, it here too? Somebody told my wife that. Yeah, but they brought it here. Yeah. 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 So but it's that. come from the Asian continent. <laughs> but this is a Hanafi issue. Yeah. It said the salat of the lady is different. She should have her hands up like this. The man shouldn't because it's because of her breasts. She's going to have her hands up on her chest. Also, when she make a rukur, they said she shouldn't bend like the man. The man, the Prophet command him to bend like this when he makes a report. Back is straight. And Jay gonna bring this. Somebody put a cup of water on your back like a table and stay. Straight. Your head not down like this, looking between your legs. Not your head up like this. Your head is yeah, normal. Just like your neck when you stand, when you're standing, your neck is not down, your neck is not up. That's the same way when you make a cord, your neck should be like this, to the point you can look at where you're going to prostrate. But some people that said the lady, her rukur is just like this a little bit. Because she got to do she just do like this. She don't have to do like the man. Because the lady salad is like this, and rukur, likewise, her hand is her chest because of her, yeah, I mean, her bosom. Her breath. This is wrong. Anytime the Prophet mentions something about the man, it's the same thing for the woman unless the Prophet explicitly changed. So when we talk about the issue where the hands go, if the hands is right over left for the man, it's right over left for the lady. If the hand right over left for the man and upon his chest, then it's for the lady upon her chest. And this is vice versa. You can't say the hand right over left on the chest of a lady 
and the man that should be on his stomach or on his navel or below his navel. So the shaykh keep bringing this because normally you're going to hear three things. Hand on the stomach, hand on the navel, hand below the navel, like, you know, almost from the price. And all of these three narrations, the stomach, the navel, below the navel, some people call it the belly button, on the belly button, below the belly button, this hadith da'if jiddi. And the shafi is madhab, and the madhab of Abi Hanifa, yani, you'll find the people saying this, to put the hand on the stomach, on the belly button, below the belly button. As for the chest, As for the chest, then Shaykh from the Mughbir Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and I heard Shaykh Muhammad Saleh, and Imam Muhammad Saleh say, mean talk about this too. This narration, Shaykh al Bani, he used the narration, narration of Wa'il ibn, ha ibn Hajj. Wa'il ibn Hajj. Shaykh Mughbir said, this narration of Wa'il ibn Hajjah, he said, Huwa asah hadith fi hadha bab. Huwa asah hadith fi hadha bab. Huwa asah is the most authentic. Fi hadha bab, bab here means in the subject matter that you're talking about. But that topic, when we talk about the right over left, it's debatable. I mean, subhanAllah, um, the hands right over left on the chest, and we're focusing on the chest, sorry. That topic of the hands upon the chest is debatable because the statement asah doesn't mean that the sahih. Some people take this and they misunderstand it. If you say hadith sahih, that's one thing, it's authentic. If you say hadith sahih li ghayri, that means the origin of it is not acceptable and other hadith brought together makes it sahih by other hadith. If you say asah, have the hadith, this means out of all of the hadiths on the subject matter, this one is the strongest. It's the most yani, usable, it's the least tainted or the least weakest. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's sahih. And this is the point Sheikh Mukbil mentioned, he said, because the narration of Wa'il ibn Harit, Wa'il ibn Hajr, that hadith is dying. But al Bani deems it to be okay, and this is one of those issues where if al Bani sahahahu, that means when you say al Bani deems it or sahahahu in Arabic, that indicates the hadith is da'i from Jump Street. If it was sahih, he wouldn't have to sahahahu deem it to be. It would be by nature sahih. So therefore, Sheikh Mukbil said, if you put your hand on your hand right on the left, that's non-debatable. Okay, now your chest. Shaykh said, if you put it on your chest, it's okay. But if you put it below the chest, it's okay, because the narration of Wa'il Ibn uh, 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 Hajr isn't Sahih. It's the strongest, it's the most authentic out of all of the hadith where you place your hand. It's more authentic than on the stomach. It's more authentic than on the belly button. It's more authentic below the belly button. Below the belly button, daif jittin, almost fabricated. On the belly button, daif jittin, uh, very weak, almost fabricated. On the stomach, daif. And on the chest, daif, but it's a lot stronger when you compare below the navel, on the navel, on the stomach, on the chest. On the chest is the least tainted the least weakest out of those four hadiths. Below the stomach, below the navel. On the navel, and then on the stomach, not on the navel, and then on the chest. So therefore, if you see somebody praying, his hand is on his stomach. Sheikh Mukbil said that's okay because there's no proof that it should be on the chest. But to have it on the, the belly button and below, he said, definitely don't do that because the people of Bidah have adopted these two ways based on these unauthentic hadiths. So you'll find the Yemeni, sometimes he will have his jambi, his, his dagger, he have his hand on his dagger like this. 
because <clears throat> Sheikh Mukbil and other scholars have said that hands on the chest, it is the strongest, but it's not yani sahih. So the statement asah, it is the most strongest, the most correct, doesn't mean that it's sahih. It could mean out of those weak hadith, this is the least yani weakest, this is the one that's the strongest, while it could still be debatable. So this yani, has been an issue that brothers have been taught that it should be on the chest, but in actuality, that hadith of Wali Ibn Hajjur is da'i, but it's the least weakest, it's the most soundest out of the position based on the uh, weak hadith on the stomach, based on the very weak hadith on the navel, and based on the very weak hadith fabricated, closely fabricated, and its judgment um, on the uh, stomach below the navel, the belly button. So you have below the belly button, da'if jiddin. On the belly button, da'if jiddin. On the belly, da'if, and yani, on the chest, fihi da'if has some weakness, but it's the stronger of the four of the hadith. Now, what time? 325. Okay, quiz. Finish this one. And yes, finish this one. Okay. النظر إلى موضع السجود والخشوع وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا صلى طأطأ رأسه ورمى ببصره نحو الأرض ولما دخل الكعبة ما خلف بصره موضع السجود حتى خرج منها وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم لا ينبغي أن يكون في البيت شيء يشغل المصلي وكان ينهى عن رفع البصر إلى السماء ويؤكد في النهي حتى قال لينتهين أقوام يرفعون أبصارهم إلى السماء في الصلاة أو لا ترجع أو لا ترجع إليهم وفي رواية أو لا تخطفن أبصارهم وفي حديث ماذا لا تخطفن أبصارهم وفي حديث آخر فإذا صليتم فلا تلتفتوا فإن الله ينصب وجهه لوجه بعبده في صلاته ما لم يلتفت وقال أيضا عن التلفت اختلاس يختلسه الشيطان من صلاة العبد Inshallah, I'm going to have you read that again after the Salah, okay. and then Inshallah we'll cover each point. But one of the main things about this issue is that not every scholar of Hadith deems looking at the place of prostration to be Sahih. Nor does he mention two things. Yeah, I mean, looking at the place of prostration. That's the chapter. But in this, he mentioned two hadith. They will look at the place of prostration. Did you mention the hadith that will look at the prophet's beard? No, not yet. It's this coming. is this is this is it's a coming. long one, yeah. It's coming. It's good. It's good. Yeah. And so <laughs> one of the things is when we talk about the term in English praying silently. In Arabic, there's no such thing. There's an Arabic in order to be collab, it's yani Allah from Morocco, we want him to be the Arabic. Allah from Morocco, that means that you're going to say something, words connected to one another, yani, we want the Arab, the way the Arabs used to speak. And they all said that, yani, al kalam yashtamalu, yani, al haruf hijaiya ma'asot. And the Arabic language speech is comprised of the Arabic languages with some type of sound. So even if you like this, is that not a sound? Yeah. It's a sound. It may not be to the one on the right of you, the left of you, the one, somebody in front of you, or back of you, but to you, you can hear what? A sound. Yourself. Hey. So when you talk about looking at the place of prostration while you're praying, the Sheikh is going to bring that they used to look at the prophet's beard. This is how they knew he was praying in Duhur and Asr and not just standing there. One of the ways they knew because the prophet, his beard had some width to it and length. So from the back, you could see his beard. MashaAllah, that's a nice neck here. And you could see it moving. His beard would be moving. Because if you're talking, your jaws are moving. So if you got hair like this, and you're doing like this, the joint moving. That's how they knew he wasn't standing still. 
just like this. No movement, no speech. And so Sheikh al Mukbil, he said, that one is authentic. And you can't be looking at the place of prostration and looking at the prophet too. So the one where they looked at the Prophet Sallam and seen his beard, there's more narrations to confirm that than the looking at the place of a prostration. Many scholars will take the hadith to be authentic. They take the one yani, where they see the Prophet Sallam is being moving like this. And this is one of the ways he knew he was reciting in Bukhul Al. So another one, sometimes he would let some of the Quran be heard. He's praying. He's reciting with Duha. He said, But he's not supposed to say that in Duha after. Why is he singing some of that out loud? You can know he is praying. But sometimes you find the brothers, they think I'm practicing that sunnah, he's doing it in his salah. So he's just serving the brother next to him because he's doing it. Alhamdulillah. Well, uh, but that's only for the Imam. Why? So you can know that he's praying. He's not just standing there. And this is part of the issue when we talk about looking at the place of prostration versus looking at the Imam. And all of this is relative, relevant. And inshallah, I'm going to stop here. So, 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 so,